John, it is so good to be with you today. Thank you for making time to answer some questions I have for you. Well, as long as the questions aren't too difficult, Hillary, okay. I'll, I'll be good, but it's good to be here as well. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'll scrap all of the higher order calculus that I had scheduled for oh. our conversation and we'll stick, we'll stick to shoes. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> you, you are known for making these kind of one of a kind shoe designs. And I would love to know in a word or image or phrase or something that embodies the creative spirit of Fubog shoes. Yeah. Um, I, I would choose the word humanity. It's my mm -hmm. humanity. I hope that you notice or it makes you imagine that mm -hmm. there's somebody behind it. Like it wasn't, mm -hmm. they weren't designed by a computer or they right. weren't designed by an algorithm or, you know, whatever selling in the industry, let's get one of those. Right. No, they're actually designed by a human. So I would answer that question mm -hmm. and say, it's my humanity. And I think it shows, it sort of leaks out that's inspiring to think about it all of a sudden has turned shoes or your shoes into this connection point between people. Wow. I love that word. Mm -hmm. You take these really classic shoe silhouettes, like a pump or a boot and add whimsy to light, some, some sparkle, some flavor to them through color patterns, textures, shapes of the heels and so much more. John, where do you get the inspiration for the special like flu bog flavor, the, the je ne sais quoi in your shoes? I, I began, well, I began my career thinking I wasn't creative. Um, I didn't come from a creative background, um, although it was, but it was never talked about. I was, it was sort of the 50s and the 60s. It was like I grew up in this evangelical Christian background and that was not something that was, it was kind of frowned upon or not something that was had any value. So it took me a long time to understand what creativity meant. But I found that when I was bold enough to go after what I saw in my mind and to believe in it, that that's, uh, that was a turning point for me to understand my own creativity. In addition to your creativity, John, what are other things that you do to take care of your mental health? Yeah, well, that's a good question uh, because um, I run a business and that can be stressful, uh, quite stressful, actually. Um, and so on one hand, you can say, oh, John, what a great job you got. You just sort of think of stuff and lay it down and, and then it's, it's so free and well, no, it's not. It's also a lot of pressure because I'm only as good as what I think of. And um, I cannot, if, if I keep rushing and keep pounding and rushing and going and going and going, I run down, I run out of, I run out of steam, I run out of power. Uh, I can easily get, uh, I would almost call it depressed. Uh, uh, if, if I don't take the time to connect to my creator, to creative things, to letting things go, to listening, to hearing. I need, I need those times. So that's where I go. Thank you. So John, I have a final question for you. Um, wanting to ask, what are some ways that we can walk in another person's shoes with love and care? Uh, we need to have open, we need to have an open soul, an open heart and an open mind. Uh, I find myself, um, uh, I find myself not always, if I, not always doing that. And, um, and when I open myself up more to the humanity of everyone and knowing and understanding people's quirks and that I have the same quirks and, and I am no different than anyone else. And to see people's humanity, it, it, it helps you to walk in their shoes and see who they are. And that's what I really like um, about this ministry is that um, it's giving us more tools to be able to deal with the people in society who are a little, um, little off, off of what I would call the norm. And it's sort of like my shoes are like that. They're just a little bit off of what you might mainstream. And I think it's really important that we begin to understand people who don't think like us, who think differently, particularly in, um, 
I would say in a, what kind of context? A, a faith context. So, so that our faith can begin to be a bit more living um, and we can understand people better without just dismissing them. So. Mm, wow. Oh, I feel inspired. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that seems so important. Uh, John, thank you so much for your time today for this interview. And for all of you who are with us for the interview, thank you so much for hanging around. And so now I'm going to hand it over to Lizzie, who's in the store with some of the sanctuary staff and their favorite pair of food box. Hi, I'm here with Amy. Amy, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do at Sanctuary and also why you chose that specific flu bog shoot? Oh, I'd love to. I have worked at Sanctuary for a year and have had lots of different roles. At the moment, I'm in operations. And so when I was thinking about a shoe, I thought, what is a shoe that would go with lots of different kind of parts of my life? So this is the Sermani. Lovely, gorgeous, limited edition shoe. It goes with a bright outfit, like what Lizzie and I have on matching or it goes with something sleek like a black dress or even I could wear this to work just so many ways you could wear it hi I'm here with Isabel Isabel this is such a fun looking shoe do you want to tell us why you chose it and also what you do at Sanctuary of course sure I make our social media channels cool at Sanctuary and they look just as cool as the shoe it's futuristic it's edgy and I love that it goes with all black outfits like the one I'm wearing tonight so Lizzie, you've asked us about our favorite picks at Fluvalk. Tell us about your favorite shoe and why you picked it. Yeah, for sure. So it's named the Rashida um, after Rashida Tlaib, a political trailblazer. And I love the shoe for that reason, but also because it's classy, it's sophisticated, but it's also a little fun and whimsical, kind of like me. <laughs> 